Over the past four years, I've lived out of my MacBook. It has taken me through periods of intense stress as I transitioned from working as a doctor to going all in on YouTube and online business. And I truly owe it all to these MacBook productivity apps. They've saved me so much time, it kind of feels illegal to know about them. So wherever you are in your learner or founder journey, I guarantee there's an app in this list that might just change your productivity forever. So one of the most annoying things about Mac is how difficult it is to resize and move windows around, especially if you use an ultra wide beefy monitor like I do. But with this first app loop, moving windows around is super easy. Using just my keyboard, I can move windows into any position or full screen them like this. The best part, loop is open source and completely free to use, just like this next fire app on the list, ICE. Oof, that's not it. Hold on, let me try that again. Just like this next stone cold killer app that's so good, it's gonna send shivers down your spine, ICE. I've always hated how difficult it is to customize the MacBook menu bar, but with ICE, I have full control over what's visible, what's hidden, or what's always hidden in my menu bar. I always have these three settings on because I prefer a minimal focused experience when I'm working. That's why I also don't show my MacBook icons at the bottom of my screen. And if I do need to see something, I can just hover my cursor over the menu bar and it'll appear. And if I leave, they're gone. With ICE, you can also change the menu bar shape, like if you want to split it so there's a lot of space in the middle. I don't like this as much. I kind of just want to keep it none. And you can add a little shadowing and border to it as well. Really simple app. Also, like I said, free and open source. Speaking of minimal and clean workspaces, one of my biggest icks is a loaded desktop. Like when I see something like this, I just start sweating. The next app here completely solves that problem and more. It's called Dropover. What I can do is click on any file. And if I shake my mouse a little bit, it'll create this little shelf. And then I can add multiple files if I want to into this little shelf for safekeeping. If I click on the dots here, you can see I can send it to a message, I can airdrop them, add them to my folders. I can even create an iCloud link or drop over link. It's really handy to have this shelf at all times. And if it's too distracting, a really cool feature they have is if I click and just move it to the right side of my screen, it will create this little tab here to give me some more space. Or if that's even too much, I can click on the settings and pin it to my shelf. And that way, if I escape out of this, and I go up to the top into my MacBook menu bar, I can always get back to the shelves I have pinned as well. Unfortunately, Dropover is not free, but I think it's like $5 for lifetime access. Almost a no brainer for me to get it. So these three apps already make working with desktop apps way more efficient. But this next app might remove the need for downloading desktop apps completely. It's called Arc by the browser company. I've been using Arc for over a year now, and I must say, I haven't been this excited about something since Breath of the Wild came out. It's clean, it's fast, it's personalized and AI powered. And they've built features into Arc that kind of eliminate the need for a lot of other tools. Let me show you some of my favorite features. First, they have a native split view, basically what Loop can do. I can just click and drag any tab into Arc and it automatically creates this split view and I can resize it like this very easily. And I can even save split views in my inbox or something for easy access. Next, if you do a lot of collaboration, like you work with other creators or you have partners in your business, you can create folders in Arc that have any pages on the web and you can share those folders like so with someone else and they can quickly access all of those tabs. Arc also has a really nice screen capture feature that automatically finds the size of certain images that you want to screenshot. It'll save it to a library and you can easily edit them with hand drawn stuff. You can draw boxes around them, copy to your clipboard and then send them over. And it auto saves all of your screenshots in a media folder, which you can access anytime and see all the stuff you have from the past. And probably one of the most underrated features is to use command F. Unlike other command finds that just keyword matches what you search for, you can actually just have a conversation with Arc to summarize and pull highlights from pages. Summarize this article for me in bullet points. Saves a lot of time from reading long articles and stuff, and you can just continue asking follow-up questions like so to really narrow in your searches. So I won't go too much more in depth here, but I did create a full tutorial that comes with a free template for Arc, which you can check out up here. So next on the list is a combo of tools. Notion and Notion Calendar. So as you might know, Notion is my tool of choice for building my business and project management and note taking and stuff. It pretty much runs my entire life. But when you combine your learning system, your project management with your calendar and your team, it's basically a no brainer to use if you are trying to start your own online business, you have a small team, or if you're a student or something. If you don't have a note taking app yet, Notion is a great beginner friendly option. The community is amazing. And I've also made plenty of workflow videos for how to use it to get you up to speed quickly. But if you're looking for something 
a bit more robust with a slightly steeper learning curve, then these next two apps might be worth checking out as well. So this first app is called Tana. Tana is a bit newer to my roster. It came highly recommended from a lot of my friends and from comments and stuff. So I decided to give it a shot and I was quickly hooked. Tana is a network outliner tool for note taking. What that means is you can organize ideas into bullet points and connect them together, very similar to how our brain actually thinks and stores information. One of Tana's biggest advantages is the deep integration with AI. I think specifically ChatGPT. So in addition to a very deep relational note taking system, AI understands the way I've taken notes, understands what I know, and it can also help me bounce ideas back and forth to create a much more seamless process for learning and creating. I think AI is such an advantage nowadays. And with Tana, I don't have to teach AI anything about myself. I don't have to give it any context because it already knows everything I put into the note-taking system. I know a lot of people in the productivity space are saying that Tana is like Obsidian and Notion had a baby. It can do kind of the best of both worlds there. So if you're more of a power feature and you like deep workflows, you might want to check out Tana. But if you're a student, you might find this next app makes much more sense for day-to-day -day work. It's called RemNote. Like Tana, it's an outliner, but has the unique benefit of also being one of the best flashcard apps with integrated space repetition. Using AI and advanced algorithms, RemNote can automatically turn your notes into flashcards and create personalized study schedules for you so you don't have to stress about it. This is the app I use a lot in medical school to prepare for, you know, step one, step two, and boards and stuff. It saved me a lot of stress. What I would do is as I was learning, I would write down questions and I would make flashcards and whenever I had free time, like if I was commuting or I was waiting in line somewhere, I would just burn through some flashcards. But to be clear, I don't think that over relying on flashcards is the best way to learn. And it should be balanced with other learning strategies as well. If you're an OG and you've been following Mike and Maddie for years, you'll know that we did work with Remno in the early days and help them get off the ground. And since then, it's developed into quite a beast with a great iOS, iPad OS, and Android app. And so if you do want to try it out, I have a special link below that you can try Remno Pro for free for 30 days. And if you like it, you can continue. If you don't, no worries. They also have a really good free plan. So next up on the list is Alfred. Hmm, how do I describe Alfred? Alfred is like the kick-ass butler slash assistant that we all need but we don't deserve. Think of it like the native spotlight tool, but on steroids, you know, the juiced up new boyfriend. In fact, I actually replaced my spotlight command space with Alfred because it can do everything that Spotlight does just way better. I can open up any app by typing in the name of that app. I can perform actions like emptying the trash. I can open up specific files instead of digging through Finder by using command space and then space again to open a file. I can search anything on the internet and it'll create an automatic search queue in Google. I can even search on YouTube by typing YouTube and then searching for a video. And this also works for like Amazon or any other websites that you frequently visit. And I can even program some specific web pages to automatically open if I go to them a lot. I know that Alfred can get pretty complicated if you're trying to go like full productivity guru mode. I haven't personally bought any of the power packs yet. I've just been using the free version and it's been great. And so maybe I'll experiment with it more down the line. But I do know my friend Jeff Su has made some really great beginner walkthroughs for how to get started with Alfred, which I recommend you check out. If you're a creator or founder, you have to begin incorporating video content into everything that you do. Now that's a huge lift for busy people to even think about learning how to edit high quality videos. But this next app actually makes the process quite simple. It's called Descript. I've been using Descript to edit videos for over a year now, and it's completely replaced Final Cut Pro for me. Descript is different from any other editing software because it's a script editor first instead of a timeline editor. But they do have a timeline you can view at the bottom if you still want to see the waveforms and get more precise with your editing. So instead of having to click around through an editor and and find retakes and stuff, you can pretty much just edit your entire video just on a script. I've even edited entire videos just like this without even watching it, without even listening to it, just by reading a transcript, and that is huge. Plus, the whole interface is geared towards simplicity and being intuitive for even a non-power user. There are only a few very simple categories on the right side, like your project files, you can look at the scenes, and you can play around with the layers. Underlord is their surprisingly good native AI feature that can automatically scan through your transcript and remove filler words if you stutter a lot or have to do a lot of retakes like I have to do, unfortunately. It can also remove retakes, it can shorten word gaps, edit for clarity, and a whole bunch of other things as well. You can also automatically add captions throughout your videos, so making short form content is a lot easier. And there's a lot of great stock footage and media from story blocks, I think, and music that you can also use license free in your content. Now, I think that Descript is much more geared towards creators who make like educational content or podcasts or talking videos. Probably not the best for people who do challenge videos or many like Mr. Beast 
style videos, but 100% worth trying out if you're thinking about getting into the content game. And speaking of content, if you're like me, oftentimes I have to download really big files or render stuff out or upload stuff, and it takes a long time. And what my MacBook will do is automatically go to sleep before I finish, or I'll have to you know, constantly check on it every few minutes just to make sure it doesn't shut off or anything. And that's where this next app, Amphetamine, comes in. So Amphetamine is an app that can keep your MacBook awake for a certain amount of time if you want it to, or while certain apps are running, or while files are downloading, and you can customize this however you want to so that you can sleep with peace of mind knowing that your Mac is still awake and doing what it needs to do. It's like an Adderall for your MacBook, except it's free. So a huge benefit of using Apple products is the seamless integration within the ecosystem. But something that's always annoyed me is how iPhone photos default as HEIC files, which makes them really unusable in a lot of situations, especially if you collaborate with Windows users. That's where HEIC Converter comes in. It does exactly what you might think. You just click and drag any HEIC files that you have into the converter, click convert, and then you get JPEGs. So if I missed any productivity apps that you think need to be on this list, then please leave a comment below. I'd love to check them out. It's 2024, right? We're all on our innovator grind together. So no gatekeeping, right? If you're watching this video and you own a MacBook, then chances are you also have an iPad. And I actually created a very similar video with my favorite must use iPad apps as well, which you can check out right over here.